Is that it? Yeah, he's done. No. Oh. Yep. Okay. Well. Totally done, Mark. Oh no! His head. Rip. Take his sword. It's way done, bigger right? than yours. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> a little two-handed. Yeah. Should have at least like thrown it across the arena or something. Oh, he's not done. Okay. What? <laughs> How could this be? Yeah. What is going on? Okay. Oh wow! Now he's, so using, just now he's of... using his head as a weapon. So you just kind of power through the screen and, and stagger him out of it. Yep. Before you uh, take too much damage. That's cool. Look at that health bar in the bottom left, everybody. That is what what Aggie is working with here. That Yashirika Sugar on. Oh my. That's a very pathetic health bar. <laughs> Anonymous with twenty dollars. Who says good luck, Aggie? Good luck. Well, thanks, Anonymous. Hopefully, we can finish him off here. There we go. Nice. And then another $5 from Genosis90, who said, Never had a desire to play this game. Glad I can watch someone beat it for me in enough time so I don't lose interest. <laughs> <laughs> you should play it. It's amazing. <laughs> it really is. But I'm glad to be of service. <laughs> Aggie, Fantastic do you speedrun any other From Software games? This is the only one for me. I, I want to get into Bloodborne, but it's PlayStation mm -hmm. only, and that's, that's uh, a bit of a downer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got to Looking gotta... forward to the Demon Souls. Ooh, yeah, Demon remake, Souls. Because I've never played that one at all, so I, I'm definitely going to get a PS5 and go hard on that one. <laughs> hey, and then maybe Bloodborne <laughs> will be backwards compatible if they don't bring it to PC. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> We had another five dollars from what the, and he said they just tore that poor bear man's head off. He's like a chicken <laughs> with no head. He just keeps going. That, that would happen. not be a bear, by the way. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> not. close. Definitely not a bear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but gotta love the enthusiasm of chat. Yeah, we <laughs> we appreciate it nonetheless. We accept all donations, bear based and otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> To come and back up the tower here again. I just want a whole game of this. I just want to be yeah. Spider-Man. The whole game. <laughs> I think they have that around. actually. Yeah, I was gonna say. I'm pretty sure that is, that is a game. I think. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> it's called Spider-Man. No, no one told me. That's awesome. We got another five dollars from Makiri Counter, who says, "Really enjoy watching Little Aggie just absolutely crush it. You got this. I think I've died a million times so far." <laughs> Hopefully you mean in game. So Mark and Jay Hobbs, y'all <laughs> rock. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate that. So I'll let Whoa, you guys take a wild guess now. what's going to happen to this one. He's, he's kind of being a jerk. He's not cooperating very yeah. much. Get, but get in the corner. Come on. He, he blocked get your it. healing, Aggie. Whatever, whatever are you going to do? <laughs> oh, no. This can't wow, be. He, he, really he is happen. really he not wanting to go down. He knows what you want. All right, there he goes. There you go. Uh, <laughs> poor guy. So you got the uh, the like purple effect on your sword here. What's I know that's from one of the items, right? Right. So yeah, this is the divine confetti. It's uh, it, the game tells you that it's only good against spectral enemies or, or like illusion enemies or something. But uh, it's just a flat damage boost versus yeah. everything. Another thing I was very mad about when I first saw speedruns of this game, I was like, Get <laughs> yeah. stop lying to me. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. Another five dollars from what the? Who says? Um, I'm pretty sure I know a bear man pig when I see one, and that was a bear man pig. <laughs> we stand corrected. Ah, oh, the patricide. Gotta love it. <laughs> so that is actually where you could decide to get a different ending, right? Just right there. Instead of fighting Owl, you could be fighting Emma and Ishin. But uh, yep. like you said, got to get more memories first, right? So we're going to do the other ending. Right. That's like really only half the game there. <laughs> <laughs> Here's our other little lore Sorry, here. 
<laughs> oh, okay. Well, then please go ahead. There's me. nothing happening. <laughs> <laughs> Another ten dollars from anonymous who says, "Good luck on drunkard Aggie. May Moogie's brows and anime thighs bless you, Kappa." <laughs> what is that? Oh no. <laughs> Someone who's not really oh, an anime boy. guy. I've been so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not actually... I'm, really, I'm not a huge anime guy either, but my my chat is. So. <laughs> Your chat is a huge anime That's guy. That's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> Absolutely. Your chat is just one very large anime guy. <laughs> <laughs> they decided Moogie's our stream mascot yesterday. Oh, man. <laughs> Gotta keep those donations rolling, folks. We can totally push to 34,000. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Easy. These two yeah, great I'm like, charities. I'm, I'm liking these uh I'm liking these donation names today. <laughs> they're they're real good. These they're real fun to read. <laughs> they're getting real Remember, personal. Reminder, you can decide where your, your donation goes to either mm -hmm. the uh, World Health Organization or the Bill Project. You get to pick on that donate.ign.com link, and uh, you'll either donate to either one will help add to that total. So, yeah, please, if, if I could if I could there. give updates, we have for the bail project we've raised sixteen thousand four hundred and five dollars, and then for the World Health Organization we've raised raised seventeen thousand two hundred and thirty dollars. I love how close they've stayed this I know. entire time. I know. <laughs> My it's goal, let's, I, I say we get the bail project over 17,000 to catch up a little bit to the, to the who we'll take it. <laughs> I like, I like keeping them super even. <laughs> they were crazy. Even at one point, it was awesome. Plus whenever you donate, you make a producer happy because they get to press buttons to That's make, true. Uh, make That's true. come up, which is like <laughs> the best part. <laughs> yeah, if not, he'll fall asleep, and then we'll never get to see the cool pop up at 34k. Watch your profanity. We saw it. It was actually pretty legit. <laughs> it is I was, cool. I was like, pretty impressed. I did. Again, it's the only one that I've that I actually like. No, <laughs> <laughs> except for the one with your face on it, right? <laughs> <It's your> <laughs> <laughs> the, the Mario, the Mark Markio, is that what we call it? Markio. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. All right, Lord Dump over, right? Totally Almost. Done. We got we got one more <laughs> yeah. conversation. Actually, nice. no, that's a lie. We've got like three more conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you coming over this way. I was like, definitely over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we're getting there. We we got like thirty more seconds of lore. Mm. Yeah, I got to head back to that uh, temple. Yep. So, is this? Are we going to be going to Harada next? Is that where we're going? Or are we going somewhere else? We're going to save that one for the end. I've got to do this lore dump right here because uh, this is actually extremely missable. It, I definitely missed this in my first playthrough. Yeah. But if you don't <laughs> do this right now, you cannot fight one of the bosses because you will oh. get locked out of the second Harada memory. Mm -hmm. So we, we've got to get this father's bell right here mm -hmm. and then we're good to go. Yeah, when I uh, when I, I when I definitely did not do it myself and absolutely looked up the other endings <laughs> after I beat the game, I saw that when I was like, "Yeah, I was never gonna find that." <laughs> you no. need to just go eavesdrop on them. I don't know how you're expected to know that, especially since you have to do it like right then and there, right? Because if you if you kill the dragon, it's just done, gone forever. It's like a lot of that in Dark Souls games. I'm like, I need to yeah. figure out how to get this item, and then it tells me, and I'm like. I'm glad I looked that up because yeah. I, I would have never found that. It feels like some uh, some like Pokemon stuff, you know, where it's like, okay, listen, if you've got was a whale lord in the back of your party and a relicanth in the front, and then you go to this specific spot or whatever, I'm sure I'm getting that wrong. Somebody's mad at me. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, it's something like that. Yep. I'm mad at you, but for separate right. reasons. So. <laughs> <Another> <laughs> There's a cool little trick we just did to get that death blow. I, I actually have Yo. my attack key binded to my scroll wheel, and I just <laughs> I just scroll it so that as soon as she spawns, we insta death blow. Because I, I think oh. there's a four frame window for it, oh, wow. where she spawns, but she's not quite aggroed yet. So it, it's pretty precise without the scroll. 
<laughs> and then right, the rest guys. of this is, of course, just gay. Out of us three, who do you think had the best Eric Cartman impression? Nope. <laughs> <Dang> it. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> I no, I'm not practically never seen South Park, so yeah. <laughs> that one's on you, Mark. <laughs> God, I tried. Let the record show that I tried passing it off. <laughs> Eric Cartman with five dollars says, "Please say this in an Eric Cartman voice." <laughs> whatever, whatever, I do what I want. Screw you guys. I'm Dan <laughs> There you go. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty good. We'll just say you're the winner. Yeah, that's better I, than I would have done. <laughs> nobody, you cannot deny that I just did the best Eric Cartman impression on this stream. Yeah, that's true. Can, those are, cannot be those, disproven. Those are just facts. <laughs> I'm waiting uh, for it, the the donation train to start rolling in from all your coworkers again. Just asking know, for different impressions. I know. I, I've gotten uh, I've gotten texts from coworkers after. One of them was from my boss, and he was like, "Hey, when was the timestamp that you did the impression of me?" And I'm like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Uh, what impression, huh? That didn't happen. I've never live streamed before in my life. Who is this? <laughs> Mark, <laughs> that was a fun. Uh, that was a fun day, because uh, you know the rules have always applied, which is I can do an impression of anybody. It's not going to be good, but I, <laughs> I'll give it my all. Shut your it's mouth. more than I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this game's pretty. I, sometimes you just forget. <laughs> as you're running yeah, this it. area is gorgeous. Yeah. So is there any chance of being hit by a random lightning strike as you're moving through here? Or is that just not something not you can worry about? Not here, but in the in the dragon fight itself that's coming up, you actually can get hit by the random oh, wow. lightning and just die. It's not fun. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it. Whoa, what's up with this tree boss? The, the, uh, the it's, it's a tree. Yeah. Tree bosses. <laughs> yeah, this part's kind of weird. I don't really know what the context behind these guys is, but they sure do exist. Oh, wow, I died from that. Oh, Whoa! No. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh. No, God, please. Now we gotta start Finally. the game over. No. Yep. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Finally get the tutorial about uh, <laughs> about how shadows die twice. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I did not know you could do that, like, spin attack <laughs> in the casual playthrough. It makes us <laughs> go by a bit faster. <laughs> right. Yeah. What is the, the condition you're really looking for to progress this? Like, do you have to take out all of a specific enemy? Do you have to take out just one enemy? What was going on there? See, I think you have to kill 30 of the white dragons. Okay. The black ones just kind of populate in as you take out the actual ones that matter. And then we got the big boy here. Yeah, yeah, this is actually a little spooky because I don't <laughs> have a revive, but uh, hopefully you don't mess this up. Yeah, whoever needed to, you know, who, whoever needed an extra life in a Dark Souls game. Well, yep, I mean, exactly. not Dark Souls, but from soft game. <laughs> Is that lightning what's blast. funny is is things keep happening and i keep just i keep just assuming that that's you dying because it's really hard <laughs> to just tell what's happening most of the time like i thought they hit you with lightning and then see like i thought that that was you dying but it's you doing <laughs> the no, lightning. Nope. it's yeah. the lightning return exactly right it's final fantasy 13. <laughs> oh what up oh no you blocked uh, blue back. So now, if I'm not mistaken, there's actually like a fair amount of RNG in this boss fight, right? Yeah, this fight is by far the most random one in the whole thing. And it, we are not <laughs> getting very lucky here. Yeah, it seems like they're spawning all these uh, lightning blasts really far away from each other. Yep. And then he, he knocked you back, too. <laughs> like, that's. Chat wants to know if yeah, that's ideally... the flying Nimbus. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's a Harry Potter thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> What were, you, what were you saying, ideally, uh, Aggie? So ideally, if he gives you the right attack pattern there, you can actually kill him in a single lightning strike, because you, you can just wow. wail on his body. But of course, that didn't happen. <laughs> so I think we took four there, which is not great, but it'll do. 
your tiny health bar is only half full. Yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's due to that Yashiriku sugar that he used earlier. To get extra damage. It seems like one of the longer bosses. Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might be just like straight up the longest one. But it's done now. That is not a fight that you want to die on. <laughs> Especially no. right there. A little worried. Oh, just because of how long it is? Yeah. It, it's basically an auto scroller. <laughs> when you did that last lightning thing, it looks super anime, and it's, I'm starting to piece together why your chat is so anime based. Like, yeah. You're basically just <laughs> playing anime. It's Weeb Souls. That's what we call it. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, guys. The end is approaching, if you can believe it. It's it's we're getting there. We're like 22 minutes away from IGN Expo Five, which I was told there was only four IGN Expo. I know. At the start I, of this, I don't know what I happened. Was, <laughs> I was so confused, man. We came into the intro. It's like a uh, number five. Like IGN I've Expo. Been hearing every time say four. I'm gonna I'm have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look back at the archives. Pretty sure uh, there was only supposed to be four, but whatever. Shut Video games. So am I right? <laughs> uh, but remember, guys, you can you can donate to IGN.com or go to donate.ign.com and uh, or click on one of the links in the description below. We're raising money for the Bail Project and the World Health Organization. Uh, you can win prizes uh, by donating. You can win game codes. You can win IGN gift cards. You can win swag from companies like Bethesda, Sony, id Software, all that good stuff. $50 gives you a chance to win that that boy right there. The uh, the uh, IGN Summer of Gaming Xbox One X uh, B-rolls there to cover the splices that are happening in the speedrun right now. <laughs> yep. These are all expertly timed. But, whoa, how is he already at the end? It's amazing. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> uh, Jay Hobbs, I think it's time for one of the good old-fashioned $5 donation trains. I think that's yeah. what we're going to need to get this, it happen. Uh, get this thing rolling. Yeah, come on, folks. If everybody in chat donated $5, we would have way past the goal. It would just go way ridiculously past. far past it. So if you yep. do have the means... Please, uh, we'd love to see that donation total just go up and up and up. Yep. And yeah, let's get some five dollar uh, trains rolling. It. That's just come on. You're just skipping out on like, yep. You know, a, some McDonald's or something. You know, you're <laughs> skipping out on some fast food to help out some great charities. I think that's worth it. It's the price of a cup, a cup of coffee an hour. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you get entered for awesome prizes. Yeah, right. and and if we hit 34k, we get the cool pop up. And I'm reading all your donations. However silly they may be. All right, I've been waiting for this boss. <laughs> rip, rip yeah, so that. This man. is the big bad one. Yeah. And uh, if you remember what happened at the last boss in this arena, you might be able to guess what's about to happen. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's probably gonna fireball me here, and I'll die. Oh no. Oh, it looks okay. Cool. Though. It's actually. All right, he's being a bro. Why didn't Giobu just knock over that tower before? <laughs> How did he not know? <laughs> fool. Ooh. Much like this one, we, we get infinite tries at. He is stuck on that tree. Oh, good. Gotcha. Uh, we actually have some uh, donations coming in. Uh, it worked. <laughs> we have Anonymous with $5 who says choo choo. So, perfect. And then we have Unbelievable who said, with $20, who says, it took me five hours to get where Aggie got in two minutes. <laughs> I believe I believe that. I believe that 100%. It took me like a week to get here, but you know. Gotta love just watching that big beast run off the ledge. <laughs> yep. So we're actually out of bounds now. I'm taking a little bit of a shortcut to get the checkpoint right in front of the final boss so that we can just get there real quick later. Mm. This is actually a cool little repeat of all the strats from the beginning. Yeah. Just jump on down and there it is. <laughs> wow. Just watching the scenery load in. I know. I love the floor. <laughs> yeah. Just like, trust me, guys, there's floor here. <laughs> yeah, you actually, like your health bar was like empty for that, too. Yeah, I had like, I don't know, a pixel left. <laughs> it was enough. <laughs> 
what uh what are the risks in this game of doing things that could cause the game to like crash or soft lock or anything like that that can happen pretty easily in this game <laughs> so it, it, any time that I'm air swimming, I've got to follow very specific paths and, and quit out at certain points and reload the game so that things, you know, load properly. And is that and is that soft locking out. or is that just like crashing? It, that would just be a hard crash. Just game closes instantly. Oh, and wow. I, there are a couple soft locks to avoid too. Mm. Which is why, like that whole dialogue sequence that we did. Like if I didn't do that before killing screen monkeys. You just straight up can't progress. So, <laughs> yeah, a little bit important to remember that stuff. Yeah. You've been using this big, uh, you know, sweeping attack a few times. What, what, what is that exactly? And it's one of the something you can like level up to, I believe, right? One of the arts. Yeah. So this is the mortal draw. Uh, it, when we beat the screen monkeys, we got this big sword on our back that looks nice and fancy. Is that the and bear man comes, again? It, that is the bear man again. Yeah. <laughs> what does favorite favorite enemy? <laughs> yeah, so so the the combat art that you get is this giant swinging thing, and you can get a skill to use that mid air. And for whatever reason, if you do combat arts mid air, they do like twice as much damage as on the ground. Huh. And it, it's very 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 broken, <laughs> and just pretty much one shots everything. Weird. <laughs> yeah, the, the weirdest part about it is that I'm playing on current patch right now. And for whatever reason, in the current patch, they buffed that attack to do more damage. And it was already like the best thing in the game by far on the old version. So I don't understand the logic, but I'm thankful. <laughs> really odd, yeah. It's unbelievable how many things in this game they put in to like make you do a lot more damage, but then don't tell you. Or specifically yep. tell you it won't, yep. <laughs> like the divine confetti. <laughs> yeah, one of the, one uh, of the loading got... tooltips. Oh, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> Sorry, I was just gonna read a donation. We got five dollars from Carl Lorthner, who uh, I don't know if anybody knows who that is. That is, uh, he's the park ranger from Parks and Recreation, uh, played by Andy Sandberg. I uh, left a. Uh, Left a donation here. Uh, left a, a, a thing in the donation. It says, "I'm going to show you this log I found." It's got like 50 worms on it. I call it worm log. <laughs> it's not a half bad Andy Samberg. It's pretty good. <laughs> this is the second one, the raccoon Shut one. Shut your mouth! I love that character. I'm so sad he's only in like one episode. <laughs> I've actually never seen that show. Yeah, I'm, I've an Oh no. <laughs> it's, a, it's based in it's Indiana, really right? It is. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Indiana. Indiana. I should know this, but <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I haven't bothered to watch. Well, see, it's it's it doesn't have that like hit like The Office has, where like Scranton, Pennsylvania, is like an actual real place, where mm. Pawnee, Indiana, is not like uh, yeah, Indiana's real, obviously, but Pawnee it is, is not. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> Can confirm. <laughs> we just got a bunch of donations in. We got uh, Beardy the Barbarian. Fifty dollars. Who says, "Let's go, guys." Will do. And then everybody's favorite man bear guy is back. What the? With five dollars, he says, "Pretty sure that was an ice troll." You need to get your eyes checked, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got we got another fifty dollars from UT Gas Man, who says, "Pleasure, pleasure to watch a little Aggie do his thing." I'm a Souls fanboy, and Sekiro pissed me off so much that it's nice <laughs> to see someone destroying it. <laughs> Puppy. That's fair. I, it, honestly, these game or this game is a little bit harder if you're a Souls guy because a lot of those habits right. from those games will not do you any good in this one. <laughs> you yeah. gotta relearn how to play. <laughs> if you keep dodging around instead of like blocking. Yep. But wow, just Lady Butterfly taken out just like that. You didn't didn't even have the uh, the shurikens to throw at her in the air. How how are you supposed to do that? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Luckily, but, she uh, she cooperated with us. Yeah, she, like she, she can like troll you there player. and then just stay on the ceiling forever. But I was really hoping when you were air swimming into that arena, I was like, "There's a little bit of me that was so hoping you were just gonna fight that entire boss while air swimming, <laughs> like no, it wasn't gonna it, put it you on the ground." <laughs> just there's there's two ways like... to exit. 
the yeah, the air swims. <laughs> we got another fifty dollars from Anonymous. He says, "Ready to say see ya to COVID and systematic racism." LFG. Read. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't. I don't know. What, I don't know what the LFG is. <laughs> looking, looking for group, obviously. <laughs> I believe two of those are let's and go. That would be my guess. <laughs> so you can try to figure out the other one. But yeah, I I hope we are so <laughs> close to 34k, everybody. We had that five dollar train start up. Let's keep that going. And get uh, 120 dollars to get to 34 thousand. Easy. I know we're we're getting there. We we oh just got another one. There we go. Oh, we got one from Tom Haverford. Again, something else my co-hosts aren't going to know who that is, but that's fine. And sometimes, he says, sometimes you got to work a little so you can ball a lot. That's true. Wise Ooh. words. Wise words. Good shot with an arrow. <laughs> down with these parts and red quotes. So I assume that cloud of, uh, what, let's call it smoke. Uh, I, I assume that was to kind of like hide you from the other enemy for a moment so you could... Like right, that, exactly. So that purple dude that was standing next to this guy is actually the Lone Shadow that we fought earlier. Or, well, it's the same enemy. So this is kind of like a, a too many boss in one, which is wow, an absolute nightmare <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't just <laughs> insta-kill that one dude. Honestly, the drunkard there is kind of a nightmare by himself anyway. <laughs> Do not look It's funny that you, that you have to fight him even though you air swim <laughs> to Lady Butterfly in the first place. Yeah, we so gotta fight the, all the bosses. Ooh. <laughs> Aggie, we are we're uh, we're eleven minutes away. How how are we doing on time, buddy? We've got two bosses left. We got one right here, and then just final boss. So we're on a pretty good pace here. I think. Good, good. I was I never worried. Good. Just for the record, <laughs> me either. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, Outside of the one, guys, we we need hundred and fifteen more dollars. And then we're gonna unlock a pop-up, and the pop-up, a pop-up like this. That's what I was supposed to do. If nothing happens on the screen, you can't blame me for it. Uh, yeah. That's, oh, there it is. There it is. So timely. I love it. Guys, the 34K pop-up is. You built a time machine. The Back to the Future one's also really cool. <laughs> Very topical in this Sekiro stream. Yeah, actually, right now you're in, in the past. It, that, yeah, <laughs> wow, that's actually true. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Oh, and we're about to it. go back to the future. Or well, back to the present. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. We got a dollar a from fight. Mona Lisa Saperstein who says, Money, please! Again, <laughs> nobody gets it. It's just me. <laughs> I'm just I another show. I'm sorry. People start doing community oh, donations. <laughs> I got, uh, we I'm got all over that. We got, well, we got more donations here. We got Madarmax with twenty dollars who says that stealth stank. Okay, and then we got who is Will Sim <laughs> who says this game took me Shut forever to beat. Will Aggie is killing it. So glad you guys did the Vegeta pop up. That made me so happy. <laughs> I'm glad too. All right, okay, so this final is boss. Right here, yep. Just final boss. Back where it all began. This is it, guys. That owl let's, fight was great. It, it felt uh, like, what, it's just been like the one Giobu jump miss and then like Dragon trolled you and the first owl fight kind of trolled you. Everything else has seemed really good. Yeah, yeah. I, this is pretty good pace. <laughs> we'll see if I can't clutch it out before I claim anything. <laughs> nah, you got this. Gotta fight Genichiro first. Yeah, or a little again. warm up. Yeah. Take it out immediately. That's me. All right. So yeah, this fight's really cool. There's there's no real cheese for this. It's just it's straight up actually playing the game for once. <laughs> we got to play the game, guys. We're playing the yep. game. It only this took an hour. <laughs> <laughs> like just despite how long this fight definitely took me, it's still such a fun fight. <laughs> like it's so cool. Ooh, he got in with the spear. Yeah, got a little unlucky there. I'm, I'm trying to go for a, a, a double stagger there. Sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> and then you're just pretty much guaranteed to die. Right. But it's mm. fine. We, we, we got enough to get through the rest of this. Ooh. 
Were you trying to delay his spear phase at all there, or were you just just trying to hit him? No, it's so actually him. we're just trying to stagger him there. You can't skip the spear phase anymore in the current oh, patch. Okay. So we just got to do it straight up. Oh. Ooh, there it is. There. Wow. <laughs> GG. That's it? Wow. That is that is it. We we just gotta we did it. get to the credits now. <laughs> oh, we're almost and, uh, at 34k too. Come on, folks. Do it. Come on. We can make sync it. it up. Sync it up. Make it. Yeah, sync it up with the final time, which is coming in just a moment. Come on. We got this. Come on. <laughs> and uh, I got an in-game time clock running on my end here. <laughs> and uh, believe it or not. <laughs> Despite it's, the flaws of this one, this is gonna be a world yeah. record. Right this is a world yeah, record, yeah, dude. <laughs> the world record. I was guy. waiting for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, look at the party going. <laughs> I we joked about it at the beginning, but I I, yeah. I need chat to understand. We just got world record on stream. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. dude. That is a live it. world record right there. You saw it here. You saw it. That's worth a donation. <laughs> That's worth some donations, guys. We just got world record on stream. That's amazing, dude. Grats. That's awesome. I know. Thank when I was, so I was just sitting there going like, I, I feel like there haven't been many mistakes in this at all. It's, it's so pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess, I guess, I guess the question is, is uh, were you recording locally? I was recording locally, yes. Okay, good. Right. I'm like, or is this going to have to be your speedrun.com video? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I might submit this one anyway. It's pretty cool. With the yeah, colorways yeah. to the Xbox One X and everything. <laughs> 5305. Oh, wow, yeah. GG. All right, That's guys. awesome, dude. So we got the world record, but now we need to break the 34K, <laughs> which is $63 away. We got some donations here that I'll go ahead and read. Uh, let's see here. We got one from Swaim. I know that man who says toy boat, toy boat, toy boy, toy boy, toy boy, toy boy. I can't. No, I, I did like two. <laughs> he even started typing it weird, so that just throws you off even more. And then we got another Parks and Rec here with Craig Middlebrooks, who says, "I have a medical condition. Medical condition, all right. It's called caring too much, and it's incurable." Also, I'm eczema. <laughs> hey, there we go. We did, we did it. World record holder Lil Aggie with seventy dollars gets us over thirty-four right. k. It's time for the pop up. Let's see it. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. So it's pretty dope and on like theme, I think, for this game. It is. It's the perfect <laughs> pop up. I want to. I'm very excited for it. Oh, there it is. Oh, Ooh. no. <laughs> Our <does>. wow. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> We're done. It's over. There goes the rest of the stream. I'm going to wrap it up. Yep. <laughs> Back it in. I'm the only one still in a box over here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the timer held on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> We've got a couple more donations I can go ahead and read. Uh, we got $10 from Master Chief. So that's awesome. And he says, our duty as soldiers is to protect humanity, whatever the cost. Uh, and then we got congrats, little Aggie, with $5, who says, like a boss. And then uh, we Thank got you. Lloyd Gross with ten dollars. We got world record little Aggie with seventy dollars. <laughs> and then we got Okanami sixteen with twenty dollars. Who says GG little Aggies poggers on the world record? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's awesome. Poggers. So I didn't know that. That's that's the trick to, to getting more donations. It's just world record every run. Yeah. I, it, now now that we know, I, know I'm, I'm just gonna have to, I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna have to tell everybody. Hey, we're gonna need you to get the world record. <laughs> yeah. You see, you could blame Little Aggie. It was kind of kind of his fault. <laughs> kinda, he kind of set this trend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, dude, that was that was really really good. Yeah, I yeah, I know. I was watching that speed run in in. Uh, you just did not really seem to be messing up at all. So, <laughs> yeah, no? that's really, really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, Aggie, once this stream is over, where can people find you? Yeah, so uh, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash little Aggie pretty much every day. Uh, I have a YouTube channel as well at little Aggie if you just want to see the world records. Might, might have this one go up on there. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would love to see you guys again. This, this has been super fun. Yeah, it was super cool. Uh, Jay Hobbs, where can we find you after we've we've left this stream? 
yeah so i'm my twitter's right there at j underscore hobbs uh i am twitch.tv slash j hobbs 296 uh and also i do some shows with games done quick which is why i'm here and everything uh thank you gdq for sending me here uh we we do a bunch of different shows on the games done quick hotfix we don't have anything tonight but tomorrow uh i'm gonna actually be on there uh 7 p.m eastern time twitch.tv slash games done quick to show all of you out there how to get into speedrunning, basically, or one of the ways that you can get into speedrunning. Uh, we'll be running through Resident Evil 2 without knowing any of the strats, <laughs> without Ooh. looking up anything about the speedrun, <laughs> just giving our best attempt at it. Uh, me and my buddy Kizaron are going to be racing that one. So highly recommend checking that out. It's our show called The First Step, and I love it. And don't forget to tune into SGDQ online August 16th to the 23rd. Boom. That's right. And guys, you can find me at Mark underscore Medina. There's my Twitter right there. My Twitter is basically a meme account at this point. Uh, so, you know, if you want that, uh, it's there. Guys, thank you so much for joining me again. We'll be back tomorrow with with uh, Jay Hobbs again and another speedrunner. So that'll be super fun. But Lil Aggie, thank you for speedrunning the game today. That was really, really good. Guys, Absolutely. we are mere moments away from IGN Expo 5, our last big block party of the summer full of exclusive reveals, trailers, and gameplay. Just a reminder that we've got news, games, and more coming up today at 4 p.m. And tomorrow, we'll get another fresh look at Cyberpunk 2077 from CD Projekt Red. For even more Summer of Gaming goodness, download the TikTok app, follow IGN, and check out the Summer of Gaming hashtag, along with live events. Submit your own Summer of Gaming moments, reactions, and plays. Or leave us a video comment yappa in the in the comments description of this video on IGN.com and your map your yap <laughs> may just wind up on the show. Catch it all wherever you stream IGN or on channel IGN one on your Samsung TV Plus. That's it today for today for the charity speed run. IGN Expo starts right now. They cut my wave off. What the hell? Welcome to IGN's Summer of Gaming Expo. We're rounding up brand new gameplay, next-gen first looks, and got the developers to unpack the secrets behind their latest projects exclusively here on IGN. Today, we're getting an exclusive look at new gameplay from Biomute, the first we've seen of the game in over a year. What have those furry critters been up to? And speaking of critters, watch a monkey and a turtle try to cook hot dogs in Overcooked 2's latest Suns Out, Funs Out expansion. Plus, lots, lots more. Kick back, relax, and get comfy because IGN Expo number 5 starts now. to IGN Expo 5, part of our Summer of Gaming. I am Sydney Goodman, and I'm joined by Max Scoville and Brian Altano. Where are the video game trailers, Sydney? We want to see the new video game trailers. I'll show you some trailers if you calm down and tell everyone at home about our awesome fundraiser. Okay, fine, Sydney, but only because it's scripted in front of me. 
All summer of gaming long, IGN is raising money to support two awesome charities, the World Health Organization's COVID-19 Response Fund, dedicated to studying, tracking, and combating the coronavirus pandemic, as well as the Bail Project, a nonprofit that pays bail for people in need, reuniting families, and restoring the presumption of innocence. You can donate by clicking the links in your video description below or by heading to donate.ign.com. And when you do, you'll be entered to win some awesome prizes like swag and video games. And people who donate more than 50 whole bucks will be entered to win a limited edition Summer of Gaming Xbox One X. Again, that's donate.ign.com. Now, Sydney, we got all the important stuff out of the way. Can we please see the trailers? Show the trailers. Show us the trailers. We want to see the Show games. the trailers. Show us the game. You got trailers, it, trailers, boys. Trailers. Roll the thing. <laughs> trailers. <laughs> Hello, Mr. President. You will not catch me. I built all this empire. Hundreds of hospitals and schools. I created thousands and thousands of jobs. Extreme poverty has disappeared. People have a better life now. Drugs? It is just the law of the market. When there is demand, there is supply. Why your citizens want my drugs? Yes, I am a killer. What about you, Mr. President? Out. Door dash! Oh, they've got to get through the door and they're in a real hurry, but most of the doors are fake! Oh no! That's gotta hurt! Egg scramble! What's for breakfast today? We've gotta to make an omelette and it's gotta be big! And down the dizzy heights! Oh, fries with the wind! Fries in the lead! Burger coming up a rear! Tail tag! It's a lovely time. Everyone's trying to take what isn't theirs anymore! Woo, those tails passing hands. Watch out for your undies! It's pandemonium! Full Mountain, everybody's going up Full Mountain, but only one will achieve kinghood who will be the monarch of the mountain. They're moving past the hammers now. Watch the turnstiles, it's the fruit shoot. You get to your local supermarket and suddenly somebody's throwing fruit at you. What are you, a doctor? They're trying to keep you away. Too many apples, too many bananas, too many peaches and pears. Keep going, keep on pushing through. Hoarders, only a few balls and too many people trying to steal them. Red duck with the win. That duck is so goth, it reminds me of being a teenager. Moving on to the Jump Club. Ah, oh, it's a classic event based on Jump Rope. One of the favorites, our champion here, chucking and jiving, doing his best to stay in the competition. The competitor's trying to stay on the platform. Everybody knows about full ball, it's like soccer, only bigger and ballier. He's almost got it, they've almost made the recovery. Blue team on the recovery, no, D9. Ooh, no, no goal. Block party. The lights are on, the beats are bumping, and it's time to hop these yellow bars. And they've done it. They've done it. They're all over it. Everybody's a winner. Everybody's winning. Hit parade. Watch for the boulders. Watch for the falls. Watch for the fall, guys. One, two, three. Everybody's getting hit. They've kept their balance. The bird tail really helps out in this scenario. To the slime climb. You've got to watch out for these. Oh, warning pants, duck face in the lead. Look at that waddle. He's got the confidence of a champion. Oh, no, and he's over the edge. 
Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout PlayStation 4 and PC Summer 2020. In Haven, you share the journey of two lovers who escape to a lost planet to stay together. You play you and Kay, the two heroes, at the same time. They glide freely over the plains of the fragmented planet. It feels a bit like going down a ski slope with a partner. The love relationship is at the heart of the game. You play a couple. You share the intimacy of two lovers who have been together for a while. Stranded on Source, they're looking for ways to repair their ship. And it's not an easy thing in an unknown world, shattered in floating fragments and shaken with tremors. When they have to fight, you control both characters at the same time. To be efficient, you chain your actions or synchronize them. It's real time and feels a bit like a rhythm game or playing a two-player sport. After a fight, Hugging or kissing will give them a nice little health boost. But in order to recover completely, they craft balms and cures and improvise meals with what they gathered on Source. Eating isn't just about health and stamina. Sharing a good meal and everything they do together is really what builds the relation and the characters up. And when the mood is right, they celebrate over a drink and share a special moment together. It is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. However, we have gathered enough information to support our suspicions that this following segment involves a rather notable and peculiar resident of 1221B Baker Street. It's elementary, my dear Watson. The game is afoot. It's a, it's a Sherlock Holmes game. W watch the video. Hello everyone. As some of you might know, we recently unveiled our new game, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, a prequel to the Sherlock Adventures coming to current and next-gen platforms in 2021. You guessed it, it's a story-driven detective game with a strong emphasis on detective gameplay that will explore Sherlock's very first case. To be completely honest with you, when we're first thinking of doing the next Sherlock Holmes adventure, we're thinking of going into two directions. And the first direction being, we stick with the old traditional homes. So the one that we know for being this antisocial genius who's all about the truth and pushing emotions aside. But as we're working on this game, we started to ask ourselves these questions. Uh, questions like, look, was Holmes always like this? And then we started thinking to ourselves, look, maybe something happened to him that made him this way and turn him into this antisocial genius. 
And this is what Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is about. It's about trying to find out who was Sherlock Holmes before he became this huge world famous detective. Sherlock Holmes is on his way to becoming an adult. It's a process which for a lot of people can occur in uh, one night or take decades. Sherlock Holmes, like anybody else, has to struggle between who he thinks he is, who he is for the others and who he really is. He has yet to understand the truth about himself and this is where the player intervenes. The player is uh, driving him throughout this challenging journey uh, of becoming the man he's meant to be. We want Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 to be a hardcore detective experience that encourages players to think about who they are and if they have the right to be the judge of others. We will build our cases around the idea of impossible to solve crimes, ones that only Sherlock can crack. But because we are exploring his younger times, Sherlock's approach and style to solving them are a little bit different. Our Sherlock is not that detached detective yet. He is more enthusiastic, reckless, and less discreet. He is a young rebel who loves to be admired and solves his cases to elevate himself above everyone else, especially competitors. Sherlock can also be quite adamant in his views. Uh, for example, he firmly believes that criminals are a plague that must be eliminated without any questions. And his youthful naivet dictates that the ends may justify the means as long as the outcome is beneficial. Truth is just a joyful challenge. And it's not his problem that uncovering the truth may cause harm. His personality is deeply rooted in different philosophical doctrines such as Kantian ethics and utilitarianism. They contradict each other and it creates inner conflicts within his mind. And lastly, a few words about the location itself. Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 will take place on a fictitious Mediterranean island in the 19th century. We wanted to step away from the usually moody setting and have more artistic freedom. And to our Sherlock London and Victoria England represent the establishment that he would desperately want to escape. So thank you so much for taking a look at our upcoming project. Let us know your thoughts and we'll speak with each other soon. Check out this game on IGN's Summer of Gaming, highlighting exciting under-the-radar games worth your attention. Our next game is a stylish time travel RPG called Chris Tales, where the left side of the screen is always in the past, and the right side of the screen is always in the future. Check out some exclusive new gameplay. Like what you see? Then head on over to IGN.com or YouTube.com slash IGN to watch the full extended version of this gameplay. Mmm, delicious. Thanks for that gaming appetizer, Tom. 
<laughs> but it's time for the main course. And you know what they say, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. And there's no use over crying over spilled milk. That was almost the saying. And too many cooks spoil the broth. Of course, all those rules go out the kitchen window when you're playing Overcooked, everyone's favorite frantic co-op cooking game. And Max and Brian got a taste of what's on the menu with the newest DLC. Let's dig in. Bon appetit. Braised. Zest. Cooking terms. Hey everybody, Max and Brian here. We're about to jump into Overcooked 2 and try our hand at the latest seasonal update, which is Suns Out, Buns Out. This is coming to Overcooked 2, I believe on July 5th. Uh, it's coming to consoles a little bit later, but it's all sorts of summer-themed nonsense involving hot dogs. We love hot dogs. Let's get in there. That's right. Max, this is one of my favorite games, and you're one of my best friends, and I can't wait to use this game as an excuse to get in a huge argument with you. Let's have a fight in the kitchen. All right. Let's do it. So hot dogs are one of my favorite foods, and I think that they're almost impossible to cook poorly unless you full-on set them on fire. So let's see how this goes. There's a place in Clifton, New Jersey that I like to go to called Rut's Hut, and they make hot dogs. Like, they boil them until they explode, and they're called the Rippers, and it's really cool. I want to go there so much. I really want to go there and beat the Ripper. So I'm playing as the ape. Okay. That weenie over they're... here. You got to fill up that uh, fill up that water pot. I'm just going to move home. What, water a... pot? You know, the pot okay. for water. And don't go on I'm the boiling street. some... I'm boiling a hot dog right now. Why are there balloons here? This is very distracting. It's a summertime celebration of the Great Sausage Festival. The is World it, International that? Hot Dog Festival. Number one place is for hot dogs. Is that confetti? That confetti is going to get... Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Okay, I, now we got to go chop some buns. I'm going to wait till this wiener's done to... sautéing. Oh, I dropped, the, I dropped the boiling water on the floor. Don't do that. How do you... You forget how to play the game? I did too. I also bad at the game. Oh, Cremony, I need to get the. Ah, I fell on the road. I got run over by parade <laughs> floats. You can't have that. All right, I need a wiener and a buns. What is this overcooked? Yeah, it is overcooked. That's the name of the game. I meant to cook it wrong. All right, get over there. It's time for chopping the buns. I don't know what he's doing to the buns. What? Why would you chop a bun? I like that would ruin it. Most hot dog buns are usually stale to begin with. That's going to just a wreck. Ah. Do you know how to get the water out of the hot dog out of the water? You think you just pour the water on the plate? Uh, oh. But you got to bring sure? a plate over. I'm doing real bad here. Where's the plate? They're on the, over okay. the other place. I'm just, we're just making a, a oh, damn I mess. Died. <laughs> Did I get the wiener in there? Did you fall the street again? I died, There's yeah. that bun. Get the bun. Okay. Did I do it? Oh, you're, okay. So you're... I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Uh, what are we cooking? We're cooking with mustard? Okay, never mind. It's good. So apparently the switch to change the condiment machine is all the way over here. Oh, so you're supposed to... Hey, I made a winner. What now? Oh, God, they want ketchup and mustard? What are these Who are these Rockefellers? What do they think they are? Yeah, so I don't really think you're supposed to just drop a, a whole thing of boiling water onto a knife in this game, Max. <laughs> what are you talking I'm going to wash a dish. You need a plate, you, you farm animal. That's why I would never let a turtle serve me a hot dog. We get salmonella on it. Okay, I'll wash dishes. You can do pretty Shit, much everything I fell else. in the street and my hot dog's getting away. It's in the parade float. Damn it. <laughs> I've uh, cleaned a dish. You got the dish clean. Okay, well, great. I need a, I need you to cook the wieners for me. Get Who over wants there. this hot dog? Oh, I die. <laughs> I'm going to go get more wieners. It seems to strange. These, that, these buns. It seems strange that the street is so dangerous here. I was, watch, think these I was look... watching a Food Network show, and they had guys on there who could carry upwards of three hot dogs with one hand. It's crazy. I feel like these guys are only carrying one at a time. It's bad news. Uh-oh. I'm going to overcook these dogs. Oh, I got it. You're okay. Have you figured out how to get the dog out of the water? You just put it on the plate. I don't know about that. What are they doing to these buns? Oh, you put me in the street. <laughs> Shit, I threw my hot dog bun across the room. Give me that. Oh, why am I throwing it? Pick up the bun, you stupid monkey. Come on. Stop! What am I doing with my hands? My funny little ape hands. Get, pick it up. Pick it up, you sick animal. Get it on the knife. <laughs> All right, chopping the buns. 
Give me that. Why would you chop a bun? It, get okay, that, I have get the hot that dog. mustard. They want mustard and ketchup. No, you fool. They I, want condiments. <laughs> they want a flavor sensation. I figured some of them were may, might have been allergic. It's completely fine. I would love to go to a restaurant where like a snapping turtle comes out and he's like, "Here's your <laughs> hot dogs," and the people are like, "I did. I wanted mustard and ketchup," and he'd just be like, "Well, mm. I'm gonna wash this filthy plate." Let's just do that. That's that's a good thing to do. All the hot dogs are shaking up there, Max. What are you talking about? That's because the people are starving. They want wieners, damn it. Oh, man. I'm do we're doing real bad. This is the first level. We're terrible at this. This is why we never ran a restaurant together. We'd actually probably be okay at that. What kind of nonsense do these people want on they want... Mustard and ketchup. Go hit that big button over there. What are you doing shoving me? I was getting a, I was getting a, a, a bun over here. Why can't you just put a hot dog on the bun and just call it a day? I mean, maybe if you're making hot dogs for children who are afraid of flavor, that could be an option. Yeah. Give me that. Get, I, can you take that hot dog next to me, next to you, and put? What did you do? Drop the, the drop the bun on the floor. Get out of the street. I did not. Give him the ketchup. Give them the, it's no, the give balloons them the are really distracting. They want the ketchup, you They fool. loved they it. The... They loved it. You don't. I died. What did you? They loved it. The you don't know what you're talking about. Stick man, we're running out of time. Everyone hates our hot dog restaurant. They're never going to come to Captain Sea Turtle and Uncle, Uncle Ape's Hot Dog Emporium <laughs> again. Get what did you hit me with? Get out of here! You got a hot dog on the floor, you big turd. Get go 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 go! Deliver it! Deliver it! We're so close! Oh no, plate. Who needs a plate for a hot dog, really? You're you could just to eat hand a hot dog off a piece of paper. <laughs> I would eat it with my hand. Orders failed. How do we get Five. negative 17? Negative 17 points. Everyone is sad. Even even the onion. I'm waving. And onions are, are born to cry. Yeah, hooray. All right. Well, I guess we can continue. Did we pass? Pass what? Hot dogs. We did. That was really... I didn't even know you could get negative numbers in this game. Well, time to go to the beach. What's over here? They don't allow us over here yet. So do we have to defeat the hot dogs again? Yeah, we have to get a higher score than negative 17. Oh, yeah, no, it... Why is the flag have blood on it? What is that? Let's try this again. Okay. Negative 17. You gotta be kidding me. I mean, what did you expect? I, would, I was thinking closer to like negative 2, maybe. Alright, so let's get to it. I'm gonna start bringing these wieners across... The, th the thoroughfare. I don't want to hear that ever again. All right, I'm going to bring a bun over, and I'm going to do some chopping. Just, you chop the buns. I'll do the hot dog stuff. Okay. There's the a bun on the plate stuff. here. Okay, let's do this. I will stick to buns and plates, and you do all the cooking of the dogs. Okay? I'm not going to cook a dog, you sick man. <laughs> oh, okay, no. Have, oh, no. i got to get the bot. Careful. The bot. Okay, careful. The bot, the bot's going. Okay. Here we go. I have now chopped uh, three buns. And so all we really need is some dogs. If you could throw some dogs on there, that'd all be right. real great of you. I got there dog you go. number one. Okay. All right. I got to dish these I have here, pots. Up here, this is the uh, up on deck dog dog bench. <laughs> right, throw the stupid, get rid of the pot. Put it down. Okay, you just hear what dog, I said? Dog prep bench. Okay. <laughs> the on deck dog bench is up top. What's wrong with you? There we go. What do you mean, what's wrong with me? It's all these balloons. I'm allergic to them. Why are you allergic to balloons? That's not how latex <laughs> allergies work. I don't have a latex allergy. Only when they're skyborne. Can you... Oh, no! Get we got a problem my... here! Okay. Okay, okay, okay. A lot of dogs going up here. Why did you leave... You left hot dog water on the floor. Okay, can you do me a you favor? Gotta... Can you... Can you hit that button what over there? What was that noise? That was, the, that was the ketchup... Hit that red what button, mean, the, the button? yellow button by the hot dogs. Look at it. Stop it. Hit it. You see it? Hit that. There we go. Okay, nope. There we go. Nope. Leave it red. What are you doing? Hold on. I want ketchup. <laughs> My I need water's thick boiling. sauce to help the wieners go down, damn okay. it. Okay, we're good to go. <laughs> go, go, go. Oh! oh! I fell in the street. I'm dead, but the hot dog made it. It's all good. We're I did it. I brought it to him. I brought it to him. Okay, Thank so you. Thank remember, you. do you remember all those buns I brought you? What happened there? Are you? I'm prepping. They're all prepped. We're good to go, man. Look at this. <laughs> He's so bad at this. Hold on, all oh, the buns on the other side. You gotta change that to mustard, <laughs> my man. Get okay, it. The on deck, 
Stop. Beyond Deck Dog Bench. Beyond Deck Dog Bench is now. This, this is man now, wants a hot dog has, with mustard. I'm not making hot dogs right now. <laughs> Where's all the plates? Oh, here's the hot weenies. I got them over here. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm, all right, we need plates. To, I'm what happened plates. to the plates? I'm, I'm just going to hold the hot dog in my hands. I got okay, it in my hands on. right here. I'm using my little eight fingers to hold it. <laughs> Keep in mind, in the odd de give the me on deck hot. dog bench has a good, a good dog <laughs> and, a, and a raw dog. <laughs> give me that mustard. Hit that big red button, buddy. Get the bu get that button. There we go. It's mustard time. They want the hot dogs. They got them. Hot dogs. <laughs> All right, it's time oh for another God, hot dog, crying. mustard dog. I got the hot dog right here. I'm gonna cook it. All right, uh, two clean <sighs> dishes. Okay, remember well, the all... go... where's the bun? <laughs> I'll go get you a bun. I got a bun. I can chop. I forget the, the on deck myself. dog bench. <laughs> Stop <laughs> saying the on deck dog bench. Ah. <laughs> 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 I have to bleep that. I just threw hot dogs oh, no. across the room as hard as I could. I died on the land. That's a lie. Why would that happen to me? I said a goddamn uncooked hot dog. These sick people. You gotta cook them. It says they're already cooked on the, on the package, but you got too many buns, not enough dogs, buddy. Big I buns. Really want a hot dog. All right, we got one weenie here. I bet we do. <laughs> what is it? They want mustard. All right, Did here you it comes. Cook? Yes. Hot oh, dogs. wow, they love that. Everyone loves hot we're dogs. Doing, we're doing food. pretty good. Get out of the way. Thanks. Uh-oh. This is a Scooby-Doo parade float over here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> they do all sorts of celebrating in this fun, fun no. place. I put, the, I put the hot dog on a dirty plate and then died. <laughs> that describes a lot. Of, that's how a lot of historical figures go out. All right, Are they I'm cooking the hot dogs in dirty water? I'm gonna put a couple of these raw dogs in the dirty water. Don't say raw dogs on the show. You can't say that, you sick man. <laughs> There's that Scooby Doo parade float again. I love it. I'm watching the plate. People come to our restaurant for the hot dog, but they stay for the plate. Okay, I'm gonna go get some of these these cooked dogs over here. Okay. And I'm gonna put them on the buns, and then you bring hot them over. Swollen weenies. Give me the, <laughs> get that stuff in my buns. Okay, that one's good to go. You get some of that. Hit that ketchup button. Hit the ketchup. Thank you. Oh, crap. Yeah, eight bucks for a Oh, tip. no, no, no. <laughs> I fell in the street. I've died once more. Okay, pump the button. Get get some of that some of that juice on top. Get over here. Go, 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 go. Oh. Come on. Okay, here we go. Hot delivery coming through. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Give it to him, quick. No. I fell in the street. Oh, oh no. Oh. Been victims of injuries once more. All right. God, God, we lost a dog at the end there. Wait, look at that. Hey. Yeah. All right. Hey, Things are looking up. Oh, my God. I was crying laughing at that. I love hot dogs. <sighs> we did a really good job. Well, Max, I think we did really good. I think our plan to keep the on-deck dog zone <laughs> sparse, <laughs> but <laughs> occasionally packed with dogs both cooked and, and raw has been really helpful for us and we chopped the buns real good and we only died like 15 times each that's why most hot dog restaurants aren't in the middle of parade routes just a thing to know anyway that's overcooked too sun's out buns out can you chop a hot dog bun fast enough to not die in the street find out for yourself when it comes to overcooked too on, on july 5th we did good i think we did, we did good. okay I think Hot we did dog. pretty, pretty, pretty all right. It was a good, good thing what we did today. Hot diggity dog. We've got to take a super quick break, but still to come an exclusive look at some brand new gameplay from Biomutant. And if you're looking for something to do during the break, why not donate to our awesome charities, the World Health Organization's COVID-19 Response Fund and the Bail Project. You can find out more by following the links down below in the description or by heading to donate.ign.com. Every little tiny bit helps. And by donating, you're entered to win some pretty awesome prizes. IGN Summer of Gaming will be right back. IGN Summer of Gaming is presented by The Last of Us Part 2, available June 19th, rated M for Mature.
by the Army National Guard, working in our communities throughout the COVID pandemic to deliver food, build hospitals, and more. Go to nationalguard.com slash esports for more info. And by Fuser, who will be partying with us all summer long. News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and you can find us on Mixer.com slash IGN, YouTube.com slash IGN, and Twitch.tv slash IGN. See you there. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, memes, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. Everybody loves watching a speed run of their favorite game. But what if you got the opportunity to peek into the minds of the developers while they watch their games getting completely wrecked? That's exactly what happens in every episode of Game Devs React to speedruns. Yeah, you can do that. Oh my god! Yeah. We invite you to ride along with the developers as they react to, question, and enjoy some of the most skilled players exploiting and speeding through a game it took years of their life to create. Join us every Saturday for a new episode. The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and iGen is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. Oh, hey, uh, welcome back to IGN Summer of Gaming. Remember, you can search IGN Summer of Gaming hashtag on TikTok for tons of bonus content or to upload your own gameplay clips. I'm too old to know how to do that myself, but you'll figure it out. Up next, Dreamscaper, a roguelite action RPG that incorporates aspects of brawlers, dungeon crawlers, and top-down shooters into one seamless game about chronic depression. What? Oh, uh, well, let's figure out how that works. Take a look, find out, go, 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 go see it. This is Dreamscaper, an action RPG roguelite coming to Steam Early Access this summer. Dreamscaper takes action RPG combat and combines it with the endless replayability of a roguelike. Every slumber is a different dungeon in an ever-changing world with a multitude of unique events and challenges. Play as Cassidy, dive into her subconscious, take on the surreal nightmares she wrestles with to dispel the darkness, Master a rich, expansive combat system that rewards skilled play. Use careful positioning, exact timing, and quick reflexes to defeat foes with an abundance of combat options. Make your defense offensive. Use quick reactions to dodge and parry enemy blows to create opportunities. Each weapon class in Dreamscaper is unique, allowing for a myriad of ways to approach combat. Rend the earth below your nightmares, fire off a finger gun, or whip a yo-yo into their faces. Make your nightmare your source of strength. Use lucid powers to bend the dreamscape around you. Manipulate the elements to set enemies ablaze, or freeze others in place. When your nightmares overwhelm you, even control time itself to give you the edge you need. Explore ever-changing dreamscapes and discover lost memories, surreal scenery, and a multitude of unique events. Uncover Cassidy's past as you venture through her memories. Use your wits to solve challenging puzzles, growing your strength. 
Blunder through your dreams, finding resources and gear to build the playstyle that complements you. Special modifiers and rare keepsakes add depth and variety, allowing you to create unique character builds that encourage strong synergies. Wake from your nightmare to tackle a new day. Travel across the city of Red Haven and live Cassidy's waking life. Forge friendships and empower Cassidy with hopes and memories to dispel the darkness of her nightmares. Use resources found in your dream as inspiration to craft gifts for the people close to Cassidy. Make new friends and improve your relationship with them to unlock story vignettes and new powers in your dreams. The more you invest in them, the more they'll support you in return. Face off with nightmarish entities that represent some of Cassidy's most negative emotions. Challenging boss fights with representations of fear, isolation, loss, negativity, and more will test your mastery of the dreamscape. You'll need to draw on all your strength to handle ever-changing combinations of powerful enemies. Spell slingers, spectral swordsmen, mysterious wanderers, and hulking bruisers will bar your path. Vanquish those deadly foes to clear the dark miasma surrounding Cassidy. We can't wait to make Dreamscaper even better with your feedback and support over the coming months. Prepare to fall into dreams when Dreamscaper launches on Steam Early Access this summer. Raji, an ancient epic, is a new game rooted in Indian folklore. The story follows a girl chosen by the gods to defend the human realm from invading demons. Check it out, if you dare. What? What's all that if you dare stuff? Don't discourage them from checking it out. It's part of, they should just be excited to check it out, not a threat. I, I'm sure they're brave enough to check it out. I'm just trying to be exciting about it. Hey, you know what? I think you're right. They're cowards. They're big scaredy cats and little chickens. And so I bet you that's uh, that they're not even checking it out. You know what? That's not the point. The point is, it's a great trailer, and it's nothing to be afraid of, even for a huge scaredy cat little chicken like you. We're still live. They can hear all that? Oh, no. The fortress will be a challenge for her. But she is growing into her power. I think Mahabalasur and his demons will soon regret the capture of her brother. Hey everyone, this is Avichal. Um, speaking from Pune, India, we're Nodding Heads Games and I'm the game designer and one of the co-founders. We've been working on this project since the past three years and we're a team of 14 members. Our team members are from India, Greece, Brazil, Australia. Raji in Ancient Epic is a story about Raji and her quest to rescue her little brother Golu while figuring out who is the demon lord Mahabalasura and what was the purpose of the demon invasion during which she lost her brother to the demons. Beware of too narrow a focus, Durga. If Mahabalasura triumphs here, then what difference will it make in the long view? You must accept that some things are beyond the ability of mortals to affect. So, the narrations you just heard are from Durga and Vishnu. And uh, these are the gods that will accompany you in your journey. They will be part of a very important part of the story that we are trying to tell. The inspiration is the next thing I want to talk about because it's very important. I mean, as you guys can see, the games clearly influenced from Hindu mythology. So we're not actually taking a story directly from Hindu mythology, but we are inspired from Hindu and Balinese mythology and we are creating our own tale and, you know, creating a universe 
that is heavily influenced by these and just to give you some con context from where did the concept where did the scheme concept come from raji was uh, inspired from rajasthan which is where the rajputs ruled through the medieval era and the architecture in rajasthan in jaisalmer is why you know we looked at it and we went wow why is this not a game and knowing that indian games are not as represented or you know you know there's in the indian gaming industry is still growing so we took upon this quest back in 2017 and i think early uh, yeah around mid 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 year 2018 we finally got a publisher which is super.com and we are thankful to work with them to bring you this game and since then uh it's been a team of 14 members like i said and now we are entering a polishing phase and that's where we are right now and we hope to bring you this game this year wake wake do you sleep So yeah, as you saw th there are some platforming mechanics and uh, that's what we try to you know add after a demo back in 2017 uh, a lot of these boulder mechanics ledges mechanics behind which of course we've been influenced from games like Prince of Persia uh, which have been our own favorite you know for some of us at the studio and so most of you are probably now wondering about the art style and uh, i have to tell you that the art style is inspired you know fr from pahadi paintings and our art directors ian and shruti both have been working on this tirelessly and endlessly and we are still tweaking it to perfection uh what you see is is a hand painted art style where every texture you see has been hand painted so literally every corner of raji has been touched upon by the very hands of the artist and yeah it's taken quite the journey since the 2017 demo and now we're approaching a durga avatar temple Yep. So what you see here is the nine avatars of Durga Ma, and this is where Raji is going to gain a power, a new, a feature in the game. I'll just talk about that in a second. that's favor of the gods this is the feature and it allows you to gain favor orbs which unlock abilities for raji like chain lightning electrocution electric bolts and these are passive abilities so when when you assign you know one of your orbs to these abilities that's when it's activated and of course all of these orbs can be found if when you're exploring the game or at secret locations so keep an eye for them so as i was saying uh, this is a durga avatar temple and you can see the different avatars of durga you can see durga herself a few of you might be familiar with kali and there's nine avatars there's shalputri there's pushmanda and 
what you can do is you can approach any of these paintings and Brahmacharini, you can hear a little you story. To Shiva, you went to live in the mountains to fast and to pray and he could not help but fall for your devotion. Yeah, so we are, you know, always referring back to these lores and myths and stories that are tied up, you know, throughout the game. So here, if you guys are interested in learning more about the nine avatars of Durga, you can literally walk to each one of them and hear more about them. And we also have another feature where a particular god is picked and their story is depicted on how they came to be, which you will see later. And not in today's footage though. Now we have some combat at our hand. That ability was just chain lightning. And these are the first two demons that you face. The Kadasura literally translates to the Mace Demon. And this is Tez, we call him. Which is Tezapsura, which is Acid Demon. He's literally spitting and puking acid balls at you. So Raji can execute demons when they are at low HP and as you can see Raji has a triple dodge ability and she is very agile through the battle arena. And she does have a bit of special attacks. So what you see is the heavy combo is what I'm trying to use. Yeah, let's just go over the combat a bit. So combat has been paid attention, you know, the the what the theme we went for is to have the Braji feel empowered and she has different weapons at her disposal during the game which you'll find out later but today we're, we're going to show you the Trishul and the Sharanga which is the bow and arrow so Trishul uh, has you know a left click combo which is a, you know, pretty much the basic combo but the right click is where it involves more abilities and the game uses a theme movement leads to combat and that's what I'm gonna show you in the next fight. And bow and arrow, as you might be curious, what are the left? You know, the left click is simple, shoot and run. But the right click is where you know you can electrocute or shoot three arrows at the same time, and of course they take more effort too. So let's move forward. I wonder sometimes that perhaps. You may have fallen in love with the human race. Civilizations rise and then they fall. I will not see the demons win, nor the twisted mystic who leads them. What he did to Bhumi Devi was a terrible thing. Who knows what Mahabalasura plans now? I hope that they do not break your heart. So, what I'm waiting for is to explain you what we have here. It's the Kali Shrine. And Kali is a demon goddess herself. And she is worshipped by humans, she is worshipped by demons. And, you know, these shrines are found throughout, you know, the universe, the levels of Raji and they can give you a power orb which is which lets you cast away powerful abilities and next i want to talk about you know what i was saying about movement leads to combat what we meant that is her triple dodge abilities so what i'm doing is pressing the space bar right click left click and that's what we call the triple dodge ability so you, you will literally moving and while she's doing a dodge a, you know, backflip, a somersault, she can do different kinds of attack. 
and the card there right that's where she can do her wall run attacks but first we have one you know a third demon to fight who we call Mahina Sura which literally translates to small demon small yet it can get annoying and especially dangerous in bigger groups so let's show you the wall run attacks that's the AOE on the left click and that's what's on the right click and I didn't show you this yet, but she does have range attacks on the which I'm failing because Mahina Sura is a fast which are almost like a mini boss fight That was the last fight and I hope you guys enjoyed this short video and if you want to know more about Raji and how she rescues her brother and what's going on in the story of Raji, the universe of Raji, the combat of Raji, just find us on any social media, we are there. Search for Raji the game, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook our website you can subscribe to us and if you're waiting for this game it's coming on steam ps4 xbox and switch and uh, please wish list us on steam and you will not, never miss an update if you follow us on social media and if you want to talk to the devs and you know know more about what's happening day to day you can join a discord <coughs> channel thank you so much Take care. IGN Summer of Gaming continues. If you're just joining us now, don't forget, you can follow the links in the video description or head on over to donate.ign.com to support either of our great charities, The Bail Project or the World Health Organization's COVID-19 Response Fund. On top of that, you could also search IGN Summer of Gaming hashtag on TikTok for tons of bonus content or to join in the conversation, which you should do because conversations aren't good alone. For now, we've still got gameplay to dispense. So uh, coming up is No Place for Bravery, an epic fantasy adventure rendered in a gorgeous pixel art style. So let's take a look. Trailers. Hi guys, my name is Pedro Machado and I'm CEO and game designer at the Glitch Factory. Today we're going to take a look at our newest game, No Place for Bravery. As you can see, it's a pixel art game with action RPG mechanics. The game is very focused on this kind of combat, where the player needs to be skillful and manage his resources carefully to survive.
No Place for Bravery tells the story of a father searching for his missing daughter. The world where they live in has been devastated by giant creatures, and Ossuary, one of the last cities left, sits on the brink of a civil war. Along the way, Thorn will face many challenges and tough decisions to reach his goal. Uh, this enemy may look like a boss, but he's actually just a common enemy. And it's a very interesting fight. It shows very clearly all the resources the player has at his disposal. You can see that Thorn can attack and defend, and so does the enemy. Uh, the game was very inspired by Souls-like games. You have to be very mindful of how long it takes to execute an attack or another action. Timing is very important here. The game is also very punishing, and you will die a lot if you make too many mistakes. But we are very careful to make the punishment feel fair. The player always has to know what he did wrong. We try to mix elements from other genres to differentiate the game from other souls like. As you can see, it has some platforming elements and its level design is inspired by Metroidvanias. The player will explore and backtrack a lot and there will be areas that can only be accessed once the player unlocks specific skills or weapons. This fight is a good example of a fight with some platforms, showing off this range of possibilities. And the cool thing is that you can skip some fights entirely. Not every fight is absolutely necessary. This is another tiny example of the kind of freedom the player will have in this game. This fight shows how, how different enemies can be and how the player has to adapt to them. Here we have a big enemy, a small enemy and an archer. Attacking, defending, dodging and parrying are the main pieces of our combat system. Every character has a health and a posture bar. Once the enemy's posture gets to zero, the player can execute him. This system was inspired by Sekiro. As you can see, the player dies a lot and it is a natural part of the game. You can also see that Thorn walks around with a child upon his shoulders. His name is Feet and he is one of the game's protagonists. Their relationship is one of the game's main plots and it will give us a clue about Thorn's relationship with his missing daughter. It is a story about, about family and about a father that is, in a way, looking for redemption. Here we've got a complex battle, where the player fights a darker version of the character, and every resource the player has will also be in the, in the enemy's possession. So here, he will explore it all. Defense and offense, parry and dodge. This will be a recurring enemy throughout the game, always bringing new challenges. As the player gets stronger, so will him. He's got a lot in common with the protagonist, but he's a part of a bigger mystery that will be revealed to the player as he, as he progresses in the narrative. Because the game is so narrative driven, we put a lot of effort into making cutscenes more dramatic, with a lot of camera movement and interesting animations.
I hope you all have enjoyed it. This is no place for bravery. And don't forget to join our Discord channel, wishlist the game on Steam, and follow us on social media. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Summer of Gaming. You already knew where you were, you're watching it. Still to come, we are getting an exclusive chunk of new gameplay from Biomutant, a game we haven't heard a peep about in over a year. What are those violent furry little animals up to now? We'll stick around and find out. But before that, we have a peek at Surgeon Simulator 2 and much more. Wherever you stream IGN, are on IGN, IGN 1 channel on your Samsung TV+. Plus. It is all coming up after a short break. Stick around. IGN Summer of Gaming is presented by The Last of Us Part 2. Available June 19th. Rated M for Mature. By the Army National Guard, working in our communities throughout the COVID pandemic to deliver food, build hospitals, and more. Go to nationalguard.com slash esports for more info. And by Fuser, who will be partying with us all summer long. Everybody loves watching a speedrun of their favorite game, but what if you got the opportunity to peek into the minds of the developers while they watch their games getting completely wrecked? That's exactly what happens in every episode of Game Devs React to speedruns. Yeah, you can do that. Oh my god! <laughs> we invite you to ride along with the developers as they react to, question, and enjoy some of the most skilled players exploiting and speeding through a game it took years of their life to create. Join us every Saturday for a new episode. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, memes, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and IGN is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and you can find us on Mixer.com slash IGN, YouTube.com slash IGN, and Twitch.tv slash IGN. See you there. Welcome back to Summer of Gaming. This is IGN's Expo number five, bringing a little bit of gaming fun to your life. I have genuinely no idea how many more of these expos we're going to do, but at least they're for a good cause. That's right, Big Max. This whole time, everyone thought we were just showing off video games, but we've been secretly raising money for some awesome charities the whole time, and I bet you didn't even notice. It's not really a secret. We've been telling them about it repeatedly, but in case anyone missed it, they can donate to the World Health Organization's COVID-19 Response Fund and the Bail Project by checking the links in the video description or going to donate.ign.com. Oh yeah? Well, if you want to be entered to win some awesome prizes, go donate to donations over 50 bucks. We'll be entered to win a limited edition Summer of Gaming Xbox One X, and every donation helps. Max, what's up next besides this huge, huge secret that we've kept the entire show? We really are masterminds. Well, speaking of helping people, the original Sturgeon Simulator gave us some of the most horrifying depictions of gross medical malpractice in video game history, and in the sequel, you can continue ripping the Hippocratic Oath into bloody tatters with the help of some friends, thanks to the introduction of four-player co-op. Let's take a look. Surgeon Simulator 2 is the gut-busting video game sequel to the original bona fide Operation Sim from yours truly, Bossa Studios. 
Originally released in 2013, Surgeon Simulator quickly gained notoriety for its chaotic gameplay and the rib-tickling moments this caused. When it came to remixing the formula for Surgeon Simulator 2, we doubled down on this sense of physics-based pandemonium. And believe you me, Bob's chest cavity isn't the only thing to have opened up. Cranking the old clock back to mid-century England, players can expect a plush new setting this time around. But surgery, of course, remains at the <laughs> heart of the experience. Remember Bob? Of course you do. Well, he's back. Charisma and all. How you ask? Well, that's for you to find out. But unfortunately, you won't be able to simply ask him, as he's just as poorly as last time. Luckily, there's a rather neat selection of tools at your fingertips. Whether you need to perform a heart transplant, a lung replacement, or even plonk on a new noggin. We hope you have the stomach for this, because Bob certainly doesn't anymore. And while I love an axe as much as the next guy, what's wrong with getting your hands dirty, eh? Ah, feels good. And thanks to our new fangled diagnostic scanner, you'll be able to keep a much closer eye on his vitals. Oh dear, Bob's losing blood. Quick, fetch the trusty syringe. One syringe of tranexamic acid to stop the bleeding, and another of donor plasma to top him back up. We've got plenty of both. And thankfully, Bob's blood type is, uh, red. Oh, what's this? Looks like Bob needs a leg replacement. Introducing the anatomy vendor, which churns out replacement limbs and organs to your heart's content. And when Bob's finally healed, well, you can bet your right foot there's always something else wrong with him. So you'll probably need a helping hand. New to the series is four-way multiplayer, or what I like to call true cooperation. You see what I did there? You see what... Uh, never mind. Meet Penny, Kamal, Heather, and Milo. Don't they look swell? But will your fellow surgeons prove a help or a hindrance? Will four heads prove better than one? One thing's for sure here at Bossa Lab's medical facility. We work hard, we play hard. And there's no better way to loosen up after a session of medical malpractice than a bit of bowling, a spot of bottle flipping, or even just some good old-fashioned domestic destruction. Ah, feels better. Take that room. You see, the Bossa Labs medical facility is a place of wonder, a theater of tomfoolery. It was designed to teach surgery to the masses, and to that end, a series of bone-chilling trials and limb-twisting tribulations await. So, whether it's traversing a chasm, unlocking a mysterious door, or simply navigating the various arteries of the facility itself, you'll need to have your head screwed on and your wits about you. And, by George, you'll want to sharpen up your surgery skills too, as a spiffing selection of cosmetics await those that impress at the facility, including tops, bottoms, hats, and even these cute-as-a-button finger adornments. What fun! And talking of fun, allow me to introduce the cutting-edge Bossa Labs creation mode. An all-singing, all-dancing toolkit that arrives with Surgeon Simulator 2. The very same set of easy-to-use, intuitive tools used by our beloved development team to make the game, no less. With the Bossa Labs creation mode, the power to create your very own surgery shenanigans is in your hands. And absolutely anything and everything you make, be it an ancient burial chamber, a futuristic space station, or even your very own ring-a-ding-ding -ding bowling alley, can be uploaded to the game for other players to then experience themselves. It's the game that keeps on giving. Strike! So what are you waiting for, Doc? Surgeon Simulator 2 can be pre-ordered from the Epic Games Store. And by doing so, you'll unlock exclusive closed beta access and some super special cosmetics, including the Mad Scientist set. It's truly smoking.
So, jump the waiting list and pre-order now. Doctor's orders. Welcome back to check out this game on IGN's Summer of Gaming, highlighting exciting under-the-radar games worth your attention. Up next is a look at No Straight Roads, an action-adventure game led by the lead designer of Final Fantasy XV that mixes music and rhythm straight into its combat. Take a look at some new gameplay. Not all artists are what they seem. There is much more than meets the eye. Ah! Ingenious! It's a different take from home. Indeed, indeed. Excuse me! <gasps> Mayday and Zook! What are you two doing here? Get out! That's not the welcome I expected. Come on, mate. Like what you see? Then head on over to IGN.com or YouTube.com slash IGN to watch the full extended version of this gameplay. Mutant is an open-world, post-apocalyptic kung fu fable RPG, but that's not even the best part. It stars a bunch of adorable animals, more like Biocutant, am I right? <laughs> okay, uh, they're break beating the crap out of each other because video games are so great. Here's Damon to bring some long-anticipated details on Biomutant. Mutant is a game we and probably you have been anticipating for some time, but it's also been some time since we've gotten an update on it. Here to give us an update is creative director Stefan Junkvist. Thanks so much for virtually joining us here. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, used to see somebody else, you know, for a while. Yeah. That's awesome. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with no face masks on. What a, uh, what's exactly. such a treat. Um, okay, so Biomutant uh, is a game... Our IGN audience is super excited for but we haven't seen it since, I believe, Gamescom 2018, almost two years ago. What have you guys been up to? Oh, it's a huge game. <laughs> uh, it's, the, it's the biggest game I worked on, and I, I worked on a few other big games in my, in my mm -hmm. time. So, sure. And we are a small team, right? So we really, you know, put ourselves in the, you said it, put it went into a cave. <laughs> That's the obvious. <laughs> and uh, really start working hard on, on, on all of the details of this huge world. It's eight by eight kilometers, right? It's a huge open world game with yeah. so many interlinked features. So it's a quite complex and challenging development also. And especially when you move into the later phases of the, of the development, when you're actually starting you know, to QA all of these features and the openness of the game and you know, the nature of all of the different combinations that you as a player, because you have a quite wide, extensive toolbox, have at your disposal, can cause, you know, more challenges, uh, bugs to solve, for example. And also mm -hmm. then being a small team, that means that the amount of hands we have on deck compared to, you know, a huge AAA team are less, you know, so we, mm -hmm. it's just a physical thing. The amount of issues that we can fix per day are obviously fewer. Uh, but, you know, we're taking our time and I'm really happy that we are getting this time. Hopefully, everybody will be patient with us, and uh, and then result I hope will will be proven to be worthwhile. The wait, we will do right. our absolute best to to make sure it uh, it is. So, so the first thing you do is is create your character, right? Yes, and it's quite special. I mean, we got the question about you know this prominent character that we've been showing. I mean, you saw already here on 
on this video that there are mm -hmm. tons of different characters that you can create, right? So the poster boy, if you will, that, that we created, it's like a, an avatar for our version of, of the character in this game, but it's really sure. about the character that you create. So there are six different tribes in the game and actually they all or each represent kind of a DNA uh, string, if you will. So mm -hmm. as a player, you're free to kind of mutate your own or morph your own version of each of these six DNA strands, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. it's not like choosing between six characters. It's like right. choosing between six DNA strands and morphing your own character, you know, in, in, in those within those DNA, DNA strands and then I choosing see. fur and fur patterns, etc. But the big thing here is like also, you know, the appearance of your character affects the stats. It's a full blown right. RPG, you know, in the background. So I, I want to put emphasis on that. So I guess what I'm wondering is what while you're creating your character, are you seeing your stats go up and down uh, while you're creating yes. the shape of your character? Yes. I, so it's kind of a seamless morphing with this, uh, yeah. you know, DNA creation wheel and that that will change the stats live. So you kind of have a, a little bit of a um, balance going on there. Like if you choose a very strong character, he might not be the strongest in intellect, for example. Mm -hmm. You cannot create a really buff warrior at the same time as you have a really strong mutant with, you know, the psionic powers. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, as you go forward in the game, obviously you can you can choose to upgrade that uh, any way you want. But in the beginning of the game, we're kind of putting you into this decision. Are you a fast and nimble? Are you, you know, a smart mutant or are you a warrior or whatever? And that also mm -hmm. ties into the next phase, which we haven't shown a lot uh, in the character creator is that you choose a class. So mm -hmm. that's also kind of, you know, more akin to your traditional RPG. Like for example, a class would be a Psy Freak. That's more of your X-Men mutant style distant let's say magic user in a fantasy rpg sure. or you can do a uh, commando that will make you look uh, like rambo you know with the bandana <laughs> and he has the bare chest obviously it's furred but nice. and yeah. uh, ammo belt and so uh, there's a number of classes there that will dictate your starting weapon purposes also your starting gear uh, and a few other things so uh, that's a quite important choice uh, which is going to be very interesting to see how how that plays out, but it's like any other RPG. But our classes are a little bit more by mutantish, if you if you want. Yeah, here you see sure. the crossing as well. So weapon choices are quite interesting in the beginning, but obviously you can unlock all of the weapon processes uh, later on as you level up. Mm. Yeah, I believe you you combine parts to create unique weapons. Is that right? Yeah, we saw it a little bit here in the video. It's like it's right. it's a very extensive crafting system, uh, so it's super deep. I mean, you can take like. You saw in the video, uh, we took a big toothbrush part mm -hmm. that I scavenged from a billboard in the open world. Uh, I put some crazy handle on it, and then I can actually add on bits and parts on, to on top of that <laughs> toothbrush or whatever weapon I choose to create. So it's more right. like you're really crafting your own weapon, putting together, uh, I don't know how many thousands of combinations you can do. It's actually for ranged weapons, I think it's millions of combinations, but it's not about the combinations, it's about how you are like finding the parts uh, that are representing the play style that you want. Obviously, we also have parts that are more rare than others, and they have special abilities. They like, uh, you know, in Destiny or any other, you know, shooter game, they have custom effects. Uh, some can shoot, you know, additional missiles or whatever for for rare bits that you have to find and loot. But you also have some can shoot, you know, make your ammunition turn into fire bullets, etc. So the looting, the whole looting process is quite important in the game and the way that you also use that creativity to craft. Something that we didn't show is that you can also craft your gear. So your clothes, uh, your jackets, mm -hmm. your helmets, whatever, whatnot, shoulder pads. And that also comes into play when you're entering like meta zones, what we call them, like heat zones, cold zones. And you have to find gear to be able to, to craft uh, you know, an oxygen mask to go into a dead zone or, you know, a warm jacket to go into a cold zone, etc. So, so crafting and actually creating your own look, that's cool, but you also have to be mindful of the stats that goes along with that look. But you sure. can also do some presets, uh, you know, so you can immediately switch your outfit with the D-pad input for different presets. So you can do that. Uh, are we underwater here in sort of a, sub, like a <laughs> yeah. submarine <laughs> type vehicle? Yeah, so this is, this is one of the more like at, at the center of the, of the world, it's a big tree of life. That's a representation right. of the current status of the world. So uh, 
compared to other games, like we are currently playing as the world is dying. And you can choose to participate in taking it down or help bringing it down or try to save it. So at, there are four routes stretching across this whole wide open world in like in four directions. At the end of each route, there's a huge boss. And now we're looking at a few mm -hmm. of them. So gotcha. in order uh, to, to, you know, to, to get to the resolution of this tree of life and world destiny, if you want, the fate of the world, you're going to take on this these world eaters. And at the end of the fight, you're kind of, you know, seeing the conclusion of earlier decisions, not to spoil anything, because you're also sure. allied with one of these tribes that, that has a goal uh, towards the, the, the conclusion of the end of the world. So each of these bosses, you're using, let's say, a vehicle. Uh, you mentioned, and we saw this submarine, but there are other versions that you saw also that we have a mech there that you, that you use to fight one of them. Um, there's also a mount later on and you will see some kind of watski. So uh, yeah, there are different means for those epic boss fights that you are not, you know, on foot. But there are also like other bosses as you saw here where you are on foot or on a mount or whatever you choose mm. to, to be using, like these ones, for example. But these are like the big world eaters. Like this one is a big world eater, for example. This is the one that you use the mech for. Gotcha. So some of this footage, uh, a lot of it's given me sort of a Legend of Zelda vibe. Was that was that one <laughs> of your inspirations working on this game? Uh, no, I mean, uh, when we started with this game, Zelda um, Breath of the Wild was not out. Uh, sure. But obviously, we love the series, right? So uh, yeah. it has inspirations from a lot of things, uh, sure. but also other popular culture. I mean. I don't think it comes as a surprise that that we like Kung Fu Panda, for example. So, gotcha. uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but obviously, I mean, from an art style or whatever, I mean, it's a bit of ratchet in there. Uh, mm -hmm. People have told mm -hmm. me, uh, gameplay yeah, sure. wise, you have if you look at my shirt, Devil May Cry, or uh, I think it's <laughs> also people are saying it's more like Arkham stylish, but also some parts of uh, ratchet or so it's a kind of a hybrid where, you know, we are 18 people now. Uh, a lot of the design decisions are made you know, from us together as a team. So that means that there's a juxtaposition or a, like a agreement on, on a, what we call a free flow combat system uh, in general. And inspiration for the world, if, if that's what you're talking about, yeah, it's colorful and vibrant. And that's what I also love with Zelda. So <laughs> in a way, uh, I will sidetrack well, a little bit there on the question. But... No, it's fine. Um, I, I didn't think this was possible, but I think that footage just made me even more excited for Biomutant. Um, oh. Uh, any any sort of uh, idea of when everyone's going to be able to finally play it? Uh, I mean, like we are at the end phase of development, right? And, and I just started with this when you asked me in the beginning, like what, what have we been doing? And we're doing the right. same thing, you know, in a massive game like this. And it's, it's, it's very big. Like I say, it's the largest game that I ever worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, you will have issues, right? You, you, ha you will have technical challenges to overcome and artistic too. But at this stage of the project, it's more like cleaning out, you know, we're squashing bugs, right? So, mm -hmm. and trying to make these end decisions on uh, making sure that the player, let's say, understands what to do. That's one of the challenges in an open world game. Like, you know, you always have this uh, choice of how free are you in this world? And in the beginning of the development, we were kind of like, yeah, let's make the pre player totally free. But it showed like too much freedom is not really epic help, uh, too, because you get too much freedom, you don't know what to do, right? So I sure. think gradually we've also been working with trying to streamline that more. So you always know what you want, what, what you'd be supposed to be doing, but then you can deviate from that at any point and do whatever you want. I mean, because literally you are free to go after the first half hour of the game. You can really go anywhere you want in this world, but that's also a challenge for those that, you know, might be, needing more help or guidance. So we're working on that, trying to conclude that part of the development as well. So it's more like user experience and primarily squashing those bugs. Got it. Well, Biomutant continues to look super, super cool. Stefan, thank you so much for giving us this update. Thank you for having me. Earlier today, we saw the Avengers War Table stream where Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix showed off new modes, story missions, and the co-op capabilities of their upcoming epic, epic action adventure based on the Unstoppable Superhero franchise. Summer of Gaming is presented by the Army National Guard, so let's check in with one of our gaming guardsmen and see what they thought of the War Table stream.
Hey guys, my name is Sergeant Axelson with the North Dakota Army National Guard. My primary job skill is a combat engineer or 12 Bravo. Um, in my off time, I'm actually a musician and a wrestling coach, which I do help out a lot with in the community. My main passion though is uh, gaming, which is also integrated into my current job in the Army National Guard. I'm part of the Army National Guard stream team. I watched the Avengers reveal stream and there are three things that caught my attention right away. Number one is being the individual hero missions where you can go in and get their backstory and kind of learn their abilities and get that individuality of the character you want as in if I play Thor and you play Thor, they're going to be a lot different styles. So just having that individuality I think is great. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the co-op in Warzone where all of your individual characters and the individuality you put into them kind of come together in Warzone to accomplish those tasks and you'll also get forward progression for them which means you don't even have to complete the war zone to further your characters at all which is really nice i really look forward to playing this game in september as thor and grinding out with all my friends to get our team together and uh, start accomplishing these missions see ya Well, things are winding down for Expo Day 5. Also, I don't know that you can see that I'm petting my cat. It might just look like my hand is floating and doing some weird things. <laughs> um, anyways, things are winding down for Expo Day 5 here on IGN Summer of Gaming, but there's more to come. And really, when you think about it, Summer of Gaming is more of a state of mind than an actual season. So maybe Summer of Gaming will continue forever in our hearts. That's right, Sid. It sure is a Summer of Gaming. Anyway, we're ducking out for a couple of hours, but coming up later today at 4 p.m. Pacific, News, Games, and More is going to talk about all of those things, news, games, and more, and what's been going on around the video game industry, as well as bringing you highlights from throughout the day. And then be sure to tune in tomorrow when we get a long-awaited look at a small little game called Cyberpunk 2077 on the Night City Wire. We've got pre- and post-show coverage lined up, followed by news, games, and more, and a very special up at noon. Hey, I'm on that. Later that afternoon, and uh, where we've got some more Cyberpunk stuff to reveal. We really can't wait to show you that. It really has been a summer of gaming. Summer ah, of gaming. Whoever came up with that name deserves a raise. Thank you to everyone for watching, to everyone who followed us on TikTok, posted in Yappa, and a massive, huge, gigantic, enormous thank you to everyone who donated to our charities. We'll see you later, and we'll see you in a bit for News Games More. IGN Summer of Gaming is presented by the Army National Guard, working in our communities throughout the COVID pandemic to deliver food, build hospitals, and more. Go to nationalguard.com slash esports for more info. We're happy to present IGN's Summer of Gaming, featuring the latest and greatest in game reveals, news, trailers, next-gen coverage, and more. Our month-long event features our first-ever series of IGN Expos, where you'll get first looks at world premiere game trailers, exclusive game demos, and interviews you won't find anywhere else. IGN's Summer of Gaming, only on IGN and IGN One on Samsung TV+. Tired of watching IGN on those tiny cell phones and tablets? Well, IGN is moving to your living rooms. Starting in June, tune into IGN One on your Samsung TV Plus to see all that IGN has to offer, beginning with our exclusive Summer of Gaming event. You'll get first looks at world premiere game trailers, exclusive game demos, and next-gen console coverage that you won't find on any other network, only on IGN One. The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and IGN is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. 
News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and you can find us on Mixer.com slash IGN, YouTube.com slash IGN, and Twitch.tv slash IGN. See you there. 